the figure that's going around at the moment is I think 14% of our rivers are in a good state of health. I, I would debate that. I would say the figure is less than that. Behind me is the River Tyve. It's one of the longest rivers in Wales and, as you'll probably agree, one of the most beautiful. But despite this amazing backdrop, this river and many others like it facing a barrage of problems. Everything from sewage pollution to microplastics to slurry from farming, that's all really choking the health of our rivers across the country. Today we're at Tyvee Marshes Nature Reserve, which is one of our biggest reserves that we manage. Uh, roughly 107 hectares in size and compromises a variety of habitats from the wetland sides to the reed beds, wet water meadows, marshland, woodland, willow alder car and your sort of slate spore heap. So quite a variety of habitats in one small space. Tell me a bit about the river and why it's special. So River Tyvee, roughly 76 miles in length, so one of the largest rivers in Wales and, and something that we're very proud of in this part of the world. It's a site of special scientific interest, so it's got the designation associated with it. Very important for the species that it contains, so you've got the otter, which again is quite a feature on this reserve, uh, all the way through to sort of the wildfowl that you find on the, on the river itself in terms of species within the river and the invertebrates that they cater for as well. So quite a, quite a, uh, uh, a river that caters for a lot uh, and also encompasses a large part of Wales as well. And whereabouts are we on it right now? How far away from the head or the mouth of the river are we? Right now we're almost at the mouth of the river. So Cardigan is another two miles down the road um, and that's where the estuary opens up into, into the main ocean. And this of course is where everything gets flushed down and we are beginning to see the impacts of, of things happening further upstream on the reserve. I've been managing this reserve since 2007 and I must admit it's only been within the past 10 years where I've begun to notice things actually impacting the site, mainly due to pollution coming from the water uh, and that predominantly is agricultural pollution. So we get a lot of slurry spills into the river and over the years the incidence of those have increased and alongside that we get sewage outflows as well. So I think in 2021 there was a ridiculous, I think 470 spills within the river just up the road, you know, from where we are now. And that number, I'm assuming, has been increased over the years as well. What is the problem with slurry leaching into the waterways? The main issue we're finding is the increase in nitrates and phosphates. So those, uh, in turn, encourage uh, invasive species to sort of thrive on the site. So some of those invasive species are, are, are native, such as hemlock water dropwort and nettles and your brambles. And those species, especially in narrow uh, water channels and courses, tend to choke up the streams. And that in turn affects the passage of fish uh, and also open water element of, of the site. Sewage is one of the main impacts of that, uh, but I would say predominantly it's agricultural runoff. So slurry, when they put slurry on the fields, tends to come when the rain comes and it rushes straight into the water and that in turn comes through the reserve. The reserve, as I said, is a wetland site, so the flows through the reserve are quite slow. So in some cases what we're trying to do is, well in most cases we're trying to keep the wetland wet. And what we're finding now is that the more we try and keep the wetland wet, we're actually building up the number of nitrates and the amount of nitrates and phosphates on the reserve. So the reserve almost is kind of acting like a sponge, soaking up all of the pollution that has been released into the river upstream. That's, that's correct. And I think that's not just here. On other wetland sites I manage as well, I'm seeing the same thing. You know, there were times when I come here and you could actually see the bottom of the river and, and you could see the, 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 the stones on the bed. No algae in sight whatsoever. And nowadays you go to any river and you, you try and find a, you know, a clear stretch of water course and it's very hard. And it's a blanket of algae over most of the stuff that we're finding nowadays. Is it having an impact on the wildlife itself? Are we seeing less life in the river or in the surrounding marshes? Yeah, very much so, especially in the smaller streams where we do kick sampling. And so the, your freshwater invertebrates, for example, the, the numbers have plummeted completely. And whereas before you could look into a stream and see the bottom, you can't see the bottom most days. There's also the other issue we're facing is sediment flows. So a lot, of, a lot of farms are getting bigger and bigger and what they tend to do is rip out the hedgerows. And those hedgerows were natural barriers to prevent soil from flowing into the river. So the sediment tends to choke those water courses up more, more, more quickly and we get the invasive species like hemlock water dropwort and Himalayan balsam sort of taking effect. What about plastic pollution? Is that an issue here? And if so, where is that plastic coming from? Yeah, so we're talking uh, plastic in terms of, of litter pollution. We get washed down as well. So sometimes you get bigger stuff like tyres and fridges come down, the, which is ridiculous. Um, but the microplastics are the ones that, the ones that you can't see are the more of a concern because they, of course, get into your, the food chain. You know, microplastics being found in, inside the bellies of young chicks. And that's something we're seeing not just here, but across the whole of the UK. The figure that's going around at the moment is that I think 14% of our rivers are in a good state of health. 
I, I would debate that. I would say the figure's less than that. Nearly all sites I manage and sites I've come across in Pembrokeshire and elsewhere, the rivers aren't the same. You know, there's that, that, that clear change over the years where intensification of agriculture has a real impact on the river system and that in turn is affecting nature reserves, special, especially national nature reserves and, and sites with designations which are managed specifically for the features that they you know, contain. Um, so it is a real concern amongst conservationists that nothing's being done at the moment uh, and there are lots of things that can be done. So this is the million dollar question, what should we be doing? How do we fix this problem? First of all, lobby the government. I mean, there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of changing the practices in terms of the, the, the water companies, the way they treat the sewage, the way they uh, uh, handle the outflows. But within the farming sector, big time, there needs to be a lot more enforcement done in terms of the powers that the Natural Resources Wales have or Natural England have uh, in terms of monitoring and enforcing any issues that might occur on, on those lands that has a direct impact on nature reserves. What are the practical things that farmers perhaps aren't doing that they should be doing? There needs to be a whole shift in the way that we, ma we manage our land uh, and farming is of course one of the biggest factors affecting land change in the UK so there needs to be a big big change in the way we deal with it but I think in terms of enforcement regulatory bodies like Natural Resources Wales have got to stand on their own two feet and say right hands up we haven't been enforcing things we need to do a better job at doing that but there needs to be examples made in order for other farmers to realise that what they're doing is having an impact on the land not just their land but the wider countryside in general and as a conservationist I would love to revert back to the old practices where you've got smaller farms, smaller fields, managed more, less intensively, more sustainably. But I, you know, I, I fully appreciate the pressures that farming, the farming industry and the sector is under uh, in terms of providing food and the, price, and the market prices affecting it. But I think as, as a society, until we learn to pay a bit more for our food and give farmers a better return for what they're producing, that's the only way things are going to change. And for our readers, learning about this issue perhaps for the first time and thinking, what can they do about it? Would you have any advice for them? Quite a few local groups being set up now, little communities being doing their best to try and main, uh, manage rivers better. And that might be through uh, controlling invasive species. So there are groups being set up and there are different lobbying powers being sort of put forward now. And write to your MPs, write to the local government, like, write to people and say that we're not happy with the state of the rivers at the moment. So why is it important that reserves like this exist alongside river, river banks and that they're open to the public? Well, I think you just said it, open to the public. I mean, you want to get that interaction. You want to educate and raise awareness of the natural environment, of the species we have here. We're very lucky to have some amazing species and we need to be uh, far better at protecting what we've got. The time has come for action to take place. We can only do so much, but it's the big businesses, it's the farming industry, it's the national uh, NFU, it's the lobbying powers that we have that need to make that change. I want to ask what your hopes for the future are. What do you wish that this river might look like or could play host to in the coming years? Well, I would love to see it return to what it was before, you know, in, where you had a diversity of wildlife and a number of species that you could see on a regular basis walking down the river, kingfishers flying around all over the place, chattis warblers, reed buntings, what have you. The clarity of the water, as I mentioned, having an open water that you can actually see the bottom of, seeing fish, you know, little things like this to us don't sound much, but actually, when you actually look hard enough, you can't really see those things anymore. So just a general increase in biodiversity of the, of the river, the health needs to be improved, and that, that, that health will therefore encourage the rest of the species surrounding it and depend on it to thrive.